It was one year ago today, seven lives were lost when a B-17 plane carrying passengers at an air show crashed at Bradley International Airport in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Several of the victims and survivors have ties to Western Mass, and the crash has sparked a lengthy investigation, several lawsuits, and also many painful memories. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo joins us live with more. Audrey. This is a solemn anniversary, one year since that deadly crash. Tonight, we're getting a status update on the investigation from the NTSB, plus new video received by Western Mass News taken the day of the crash. And we want to warn viewers, it may be tough to watch. The airplane flew over top. And he was pretty low. On October 2nd, 2019, Brian Hamer saw the Flying Fortress 909 sailing overhead. The aviation buff couldn't help but smile seeing a piece of history flying out of Bradley International Airport. I mean, you don't see World War II planes flying all the time. So I was really excited. But a few minutes later, he saw the World War II era plane appearing to struggle midair. He never really climbed, never gained altitude, and he kind of turned very flat and just kind of circled back towards the airport. Preliminary reports from the National Transportation Safety Board say the B-17G plane, which had taken off at 947, experienced problems in one of the engines. Not even 10 minutes later, it struck approach lights, hit the ground just short of the runway, traveled along the strip, and eventually struck a de-icing tank. We just heard a big rumble off in the distance and a thick cloud of black smoke went up and we kind of knew that something had gone wrong. I'm on scene. Uh, I got confirming aircraft into a building, heavy fire. Western Mass News was sent this video. It's a little grainy, but it appears to show the moment the B-17 made contact with the runway, skidded off of it, and moments later, a cloud of smoke and fire. It's a five, uh myself heard that plane go over, so it didn't sound good. Portions of emergency calls heard here from Broadcastify.com. Hamer didn't realize at the moment that the symbol of American freedom had turned into a fiery inferno, trapping passengers inside. That was very, very shocking. Passengers who had paid money to ride as a part of an air show put on by the Collings Foundation. When they came up with the total number of, of casualties and stuff, it was, it was pretty devastating. Seven deaths in all, five passengers, plus the pilot and co-pilot. Multiple others injured. With burning wreckage left behind, the NTSB began their investigation. We do um, interviews. We review all records, maintenance records. Spokesperson Eric Weiss says they expect to release their full report, complete with probable cause and analysis, by the end of the calendar year. Why says they can uncover a lot about a crash, even with scraps left behind. We've done many, many investigations come and, and found the probable cause where there was much less uh, wreckage and much less of an airplane to deal with. But the families of the victims aren't waiting until the end of the year to begin demanding answers for their loved ones. In the summer months, lawsuits were filed on behalf of the estates of those who died and the survivors left with physical and mental scars. The family of David Broderick, who lived in Western Massachusetts, speaking out to Western Mass News in July about losing his father. he will never be able to be a part of our weddings or our children growing up with their grandfather there. Victims claim in litigation some passengers were forced to sit on the floor of the plane without proper seat belts. Claims the NTSB says they always take seriously. We look at um, personal uh, restraint systems, if, there's, if they are available, how they were used. That's typically a very, very important part of any accident. Uh, investigation. The Federal Aviation Administration has since revoked the Collings Foundation's clearance to fly passengers in their planes, a decision handed down in March. I didn't know how to get in touch with the FAA or the NTSB or any of those kind of uh, folks. Hamer says in the heat of the moment, he needed to report what he saw. One year later, he's still reflecting on it. I feel for the families. I mean, the, the people that were on the airplane, the, the crew of the aircraft and the passengers of the aircraft, it was just, it was a horrible loss of life. Western Mass News reached out to the lawyers for the Collings Foundation for a statement. Meanwhile, Bradley International Airport putting out a statement of their own today, acknowledging the anniversary and asking people to join their community in a moment of reflection. Live in Windsor Locks, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News.